I recently made a video talking about what video editing software I use on my channel. And the answer was probably a little bit surprising to you guys and I actually use iMovie of all things. Why the heck doesn't he use something better? Why iMovie? I agree 100% there's probably like a million different video editing software choices that I could make that would be a little bit better, a little bit more capabilities than iMovie. But after reflecting on my own YouTube journey so far, and talking with one of my favorite brand new YouTubers, which is Wigs Garage. Link down in the description if you wanna check out Wigs Garage. Seriously, Wigs Garage is a great channel. I mean, it's, it's not drag racing, but it's still automotive and car related. Uh, it, it's a great, they're restoring old British sports cars, which British sports, nothing I'm even interested, but there's some sort of charm and it's just entertaining videos, seriously. I even have a Wigs Garage sticker on my car. It's right here. And iMovie can do green screen too. Go and check out Wake's Garage. There's a link down in the description. If you haven't already, go ahead and show some love on that channel. Hit that subscribe button, do all the things. It's one of the channels that I subscribe to and I watch every single one of the episodes. So just top notch, go check it out. But I was talking with Wigs and you know, came to the realization after I've been making YouTube videos for about three years now, and I use iMovie, the actual reality of the situation is that simpler is way better, especially if you're just getting started. So in the last video, I recommended potentially checking out DaVinci Resolve or maybe even iMovie if you're just getting started to do this. But here's the thing, DaVinci Resolve or Adobe Premiere or Final Cut Pro, they have a world of possibilities and capabilities and horsepower, like you can do anything with those things, but you don't need to. And you don't want to if you're just getting started out. If you're gonna go down that road of color grading every single shot, changing all of the sound and doing all this different sound design, crazy transitions, special effects, and things are glowing and blowing up and there's vision and it's popping and just insanity. If you're planning on doing that day one on your videos, you're gonna give up. You don't wanna go down that road. Simpler is way better, especially in the beginning. So if you're just considering starting a YouTube channel or starting to make any kind of videos, be careful on the DaVinci Resolve side is what I'm saying, because there's so much in there that you could get bogged down and you don't need to do all those things. So if you're gonna use that, just start small, get your feet wet, figure out what you're doing. You don't wanna get burned out before you get started. And a simpler is sometimes better. Every single one of the videos on my channel has been created with iMovie. So I'd like to take this opportunity today to just show you a few tips and tricks, things that I've kind of learned along the way on how to get the full extent of the capabilities out of iMovie. Give me a thumbs up if you like this kind of content. I know it's a little uh, abnormal for this channel and if you don't like it, definitely hit the thumbs down button twice for me. And uh, let's get right into it. iMovie tutorial, never thought I'd be doing that. This is uh, the SFG documentary video that I made. This is the longer one, it's uh, 22 minutes. So we're not gonna go through this whole thing or anything like that, but I just kinda wanna show you what it looked like. Um, and what I do, a couple tips and tricks. So you can see when I, I'm coming in here, like that opening shot, I just grabbed this off of Google Earth, of course, and then um, here, let me zoom in on the timeline a little bit. Of course, what I did was I just, I grabbed some clouds, like a, a PNG file of some clouds off the internet, and I kind of transparented them. Transparented, I don't know if that's a word, but it's kind of a cool effect that I ended up doing here to kind of hide this transition between the uh, Google Earth shot, and then of course the drone shot here. This could have been done so much better if I was actually able to stack more cloud layers on top of here, and that's one of the constraints that you're gonna run into with iMovie, is that you're only gonna get your main video timeline here, and then like one layer above that. The only additional thing that you'll get other than that one layer is like if you have a title, um, a title block you can put on top of there, which is only gonna be like text or whatever. So that's one of the major limitations of iMovie that I just wanted to point out. So I was only able to do one cloud layer, but then of course there's workarounds for everything that you eventually figure out. So just make a new project and then layer two clouds and then export it and then bring that exported file into a third project and layer another cloud on. You can, you can see how this ends up working, but like, yes, I agree. This is so much easier to do in like anything else probably, but so one other Quick tip if you're just getting started at this is I really like to edit like to the beat of the music. So in order to do that accurately, you have to bring, you have to zoom way in on your timeline, at least like three quarters of the way to full zoom. And you can kind of then begin to see where each beat of the music is. And you can see if you zoom in like every one of my cuts, every single cut that I make is on the 
beat of the music. So like, like here, like even back here in this shot, you can see here I am yap jaw, yap jaw, just saying something. Turn the camera. Here's some. Here comes some cars. It's gonna look pretty cool, right? And the music is building up, and then boom, beat of the music. It just gives it that extra pop, that extra effect, and that is just like. That's that's the payoff, right, that you're looking for, especially if you want like a really uh, high production value, that's just like the stuff you have to hit. You have to nail that every single time as far as hitting that beat of that music, especially if there's a big epic part of that song coming up, you gotta deliver the payout. It's gotta be that epic shot or it's gotta be that, that climax part of your video that you wanna show off. It's gotta hit on that music perfectly. So that would be my next tip is just to uh, pay attention to the beat of the music and make sure your cuts are just landing right on that. The next thing here is transitions and I could probably make like a whole video just about transitions. Uh, here's the thing about transitions in iMovie. They absolutely suck. There's no transitions that are good in iMovie. They're all pretty much garbage. What I do end up using is in-camera transitions from time to time. So what I mean by that is, you know, like a shot like this. Here we are looking in the staging lanes and uh, all of a sudden the camera whips whoop, and then all of a sudden it's just boom here we are on this really gnarly looking Corvette Roadster so how did we do that two things need to happen first of all uh, you need to whip the camera in real life so like you can see right at the end of this shot if I just go slowly you can see I started really whipping that camera to the right and uh, what that gives you is this insane motion blur, right? And it gives you that motion to the right. So like we're whipping the camera to the right, people are like, oh, we're quickly looking right, and what's over to the right uh, is we're gonna land on the next shot, which is the Corvette. Another thing that's really cool is like, if I, if I was really planning this out, I could whip from the left and go whoop, right into the Corvette, and then I can just melt those two shots back to back. I'm in the staging lanes, whip right, and then I see the Corvette, I'm gonna whip from the left onto the Corvette, and, and that is like, that's a pretty cool transition, especially if you kinda like, uh, can get that motion blur and get the colors to kinda match up, you can really hide that. I know in some more advanced video editing software, you can actually add motion blur, like a layer on top of that transition. That's one thing that I'm looking forward to being able to do once I kinda get an upgrade, but I've just been getting by with whipping the camera and uh, getting that cut just in the right spot and then trying to pay attention to try and keeping some consistent colors. Now I didn't do like a great job on here, but one additional little tip that you can do to make it just a little bit better is you can add um, a, like a little bit of a Ken Burns crop in. So what I do on the Corvette shot, you can see here there's a little split, just a .1 second split where I'm adding a little bit of that zoom out and a little bit of to the right motion. So we kind of whip the camera to the right, we're moving right, and then that very next shot is kind of cropped in on the Corvette, and then I'm gonna zoom back out, and this is just done digitally. So if I click on this clip and look at the crop, you can see this Ken Burns effect. I'm starting the frame right here, and then it's ending at full frame here. So you can see that I'm adding a little bit of that right, that to the right motion at the beginning of the Corvette clip, and that kind of just helps like sell the effect that I'm whipping the camera to the right and I'm landing on the Corvette. And I mean, it's not perfect, but you know, it, it works for me and I just kind of like adding that little extra flavor. So one last time, this is what the final transition looks like. For the largest paying drag race in history, the SFG5. I mean, it's not perfectly seamless, don't get me wrong. With a little bit more horsepower on my computer and a different video editing software, I, I know you can make that look way more buttery, but uh, just some quick tips here and uh, you know go as far as you want with this I mean make it what you want uh, you can you can go overboard on this stuff I know that so the last tip that I would kind of suggest on iMovie would be mostly about sound design I guess so uh, in this particular section of the video here let's just quickly play it I always follow the big money bracket racing and um, we go where uh, there's quite a few things happening here. So it, it kind of a workaround that you have to do with iMovie to kind of accomplish what happened here. So you can see we have the dragster shot where we're grabbing the audio from the actual dragsters and you can see here that we are fading that out. Meanwhile, uh, this clip is actually on top of a just a black screen. The reason being is so that we can bring Tom Dauber's interview audio in early. We want to get his audio started before the end of this clip. That's kind of going to just bring in that next clip. It's going to keep the viewer more interested like, hey, what's next? Somebody's talking. They're telling me something. I, I, what's, what's this all about? It kind of just 
gives you that edge of your seat kind of feeling and so I kind of like to incorporate that from time to time um, and kind of get that audio started before the end of the dragster clip so that's why we have this black this just this black screen kind of hanging out here we bring that dragster clip up and make that on the top layer so that it can just fall right over top of Tom Dauber wherever he's going to start talking. And meanwhile, we're also uh, kind of fading out our music. You can see here that we have a track down here. I use Epidemic Sound. That would be like the next next tip that I would give is I use Epidemic Sound. Check out Epidemic Sound if you're interested in making videos and you want awesome music. I use Epidemic Sound. It's all royalty free. It's $15 a month but it's totally worth it just for having royalty free music that doesn't suck and it's really searchable and they have a bunch of different albums and categorization and the searchability is really good and uh, so it's definitely worth it if you're a creator and you want some decent music so you can see that I have a song down here and it gives me four different stems so I have I have the bass, the drums, the instruments, and the melody all separated out, which is kind of cool because once in a while you might have a song playing, you might want to do a little bit of a talking portion in the middle, and you don't want to just fade the song out completely because you want to bring it back, but it's kind of it's kind of neat to mess around with those stems. You might just leave the bass line, just let the bass line just keep bucking right beneath you when you're talking, or maybe just the drum beat or something like that, but you don't want that like full melody, you don't want that full sound, you want to strip it down a little bit, mess with the volume, levels and you can do that with the different instruments with the different stems here um, all of that is available on uh, epidemic sound so that's kind of like my sound design tips here I mean I could definitely go a lot more detail into this but uh, all right so that's it I hope you oh I should have talked about getting smooth video dang it Maybe in another video, I don't, maybe in another video we'll talk a little bit more about getting smooth video because my my camera that I shoot on doesn't have in-body uh, image stabilization at all, but I do get some fairly smooth shots, I think, and I have a couple tips for that, so uh, definitely hit subscribe. If you like this kind of video, uh, let me know down in the comments. You could like there's many options. You could say, "Yeah, I like this kind of video. Let's let's do a couple more of these maybe." Or like, "No, don't ever make another video like this again. We don't don't care about how you make videos just make videos I'm fine with either I, I'm really just give me some feedback uh, let me know what you think down in the comments definitely if you like the video please hit the like button if you disliked it like I said you can hit the dislike button just please do it two times I'll see you guys in the next one later